Hi everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Today we're gonna to take a quick look at a pair of new graphics cards, one from AMD, one from Nvidia. These are super high-end, extreme enthusiast graphics cards, both dual GPU variants. Let's take a look at the GTX 590 and the Radeon HD 6990. The Radeon HD 6990 graphics card is a very large card indeed, 12 inches long PCB. It's a dual Cayman architecture, two Cayman based GPUs on here that run at 830 megahertz as their default clock speed. Now in comparison, the Radeon HD 6970, which is a single GPU card, those clock rates are 880 megahertz. So this runs just a little bit slower than the fastest single card solutions from AMD. It has 3,072 total stream processors, or 1,536 per GPU, the same again as the 6970. It has four gigs of GDDR5 memory that runs at 1,250 megahertz, or five gigabits per second. There are two eight pin power connectors, uh, so that's definitely gonna require a hefty power supply. It's rated at just about, just under, 375 watts. There is a single crossfire connector here, so you are going to be able to connect a second 6990 if you want, or even a single 6970 if you want to do three GPU scaling. In terms of our external display connections, you'll see that there are four mini display port connections in a single dual link DVI. Now that's a little interesting because you're only going to get, since most users don't have mini display port monitors yet, only one monitor connected through DVI right out of the box. AMD does include adapters, including uh, both an active and passive mini DP to DVI and a uh, passive mini DP to HDMI. So they are providing some flexibility there in terms of uh, what display options you want. Now the shape of the card is, is very familiar to anybody that's seen 6800 or 6900 series cards. It's very boxy. Uh, lots of red and black, it's a nice color scheme. Uh, fan in the center, GPUs on either side of it. Again, this card uses vapor chamber coolers just like the 6970 and 6950 did as well. By the crossfire, you'll see a very small switch up top that has two settings, one and two. The default setting is actually two, keeps everything stock. Change this selection over to one and you actually are putting the graphics card in an overclocked mode. It moves the clock speed of the GPUs from 830 megahertz to 880 megahertz, increases the voltage from 1.12 volts to 1.175 volts, and also increases the maximum power consumption from 375 watts to 450 watts. Obviously this mode is, is geared towards overclockers, people that want to get more out of their card, uh, the, the LN2 overclocking crowd as well. But we are glad to see AMD supporting the enthusiast crowd with an option like this. The new NVIDIA GeForce GTX 590 GPU is uh, quite a bit smaller than the HD 6990. It's an 11 inch PCB instead of a 12 inch PCB and it's a little bit slimmer and more svelte than the 6990 is. It's a dual GF110 Fermi architecture design. Uh, the GPUs actually run at 607 megahertz compared to the 772 megahertz of the GTX 580. These GPUs do have 512 CUDA cores each for a total of 1,024 on the whole card, three gigs of GDDR5 memory that runs at 854 megahertz or 3.4 gigabits per second. Just like the 6990, it has two eight pin power connectors and this card is rated at about 365 watts. So again, right at the PCI Express limit. The design on the GTX 590 is actually kind of interesting. The shroud has a dip in it so that when you do multi-GPU cards, quad SLI for example, that the fan has more capability to bring in cool air to cool the GPUs. This might be in part why our temperature testing showed this to be a little bit quieter solution. Up top we find a single SLI connector, again to support quad SLI configurations. The output configuration on the GTX 590 consists of three dual link DVI ports and a single mini display port connection. You can actually run all four displays at the same time, and this is the first NVIDIA graphics card that supports NVIDIA surround and 3D vision surround on a single card. For our performance testing of these dual GPU cards, we found that the GTX 590 is generally faster at lower resolutions, but the HD 6990 is actually faster at 2560 by 1600, the resolution of a 30 inch monitor. 
Considering this is a $700 video card, higher resolutions are more likely to be run, even if we are considering multi-display gaming. Some games may lean one way or the other more heavily towards NVIDIA or towards AMD, but in general, the HD 6990 seems to be faster at the higher resolutions that should matter to this type of consumer. As you might expect, both of these dual GPU cards use a lot of power, though NVIDIA's GTX 590 does use 30 to 40 watts more power when everything's at its stock settings. When we flip that switch on the Radeon HD 6990 from the standard 830 to the overclocked 880 megahertz settings, it actually uses more power than the GTX 590 card does then. So obviously moving these clock rates up and down on both of these dual GPU cards definitely affects power consumption pretty dramatically. Also in line with power consumption, we usually talk about noise levels of cards like these. Interestingly, the GTX 590 does run eight or nine decibels lower noise level than the Radeon HD 6990, and that's actually a significant amount of difference. The 6990 apparently has a couple of different modes. We noticed while we were gaming on it that eventually after an hour or so of heavy gameplay, it does jump up to a faster fan speed that is noticeably louder than anything we've, we've really heard before. Uh, I would say in, in an enclosed case for an enthusiast that's willing to spend this type of money on a graphics card, they would kind of expect that. But if noise is something of an issue for you, then the GTX 590 definitely has the edge there. Both of these cards are gonna run you $699 if you go into a store to pick them up. That's a lot of money, so only extreme enthusiasts are really gonna be interested in either of these cards. Now, if you're not uh, against using a pair of graphics cards in your system, two different cards as opposed to two GPUs in one card, you might wanna look at uh, SLI or Crossfire solutions using the GTX 570 or even the Radeon HD 6950. Uh, and if you check out the full review at PCPer.com, we actually have comparisons of those as well. You might find that you can get better performance and a lower cost if you're willing to have a little more space taken up inside your case. There's a lot of pros and cons for both of these cards, and so making that decision between the two of them if you're looking for a $700 graphics card is gonna depend on a lot of things. Uh, obviously, we, saw it, we said that the 6990 is running better at higher resolutions on average, while the GTX 590 does better at the medium resolutions like 1680 and 1920. Uh, the AMD card will support five displays out of the box. The NVIDIA card supports four displays, three of them dual link DVI, so that's a plus there. It's also the first card that will support natively NVIDIA surround or 3D vision surround. The NVIDIA card is quieter, but uses more power at stock settings. AMD card a little bit louder, maybe a little bit more power efficient. So there's a lot to consider here. Obviously you wanna to go to PCPer.com and check out the full written review of both the GTX 590 and the HD 6990 to make up your mind on this quite hefty investment in graphics card technology. For now, I'm Ryan Schrott with PC Perspective. Thanks for watching.